Hello everyone. You guys know what today is. It's Wednesday and it's stream day. Today we're going to be covering on how to create roofs with the fantasy battle map style. So that means we're going to be covering terminology, the components, the different types of roofs, and how to roof your buildings. So the whole gambit, I'm excited for this stream. Roofs are kind of frustrating sometimes, so super glad that you are here. And if you want to follow along the stream, just clone and edit the map that's in the in the chat there. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to find that in the map description in the video description. I got really just one real quick announcement. Uh, and that is is that we kind of released some new art. Let's take a look here. We added some new forest art. So the trees, we've added some new trees to it. So lots of new forest art, trees, bushes, flowers, things like that. So definitely go check those out. They're absolutely beautiful. And we'll be showcasing that in our next stream next week when we make campsites. So definitely go check that out, okay? All right, well, let's not waste any time. Let's just jump right in. First, we're going to be covering the terminology because it's going to be hard to kind of teach you about how to roof unless you know the roof pieces, the terms. So let's just cover that first. So we're going to delete this title. And the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to be touching on the terminology. So let's go ahead and turn that on real quick. All right. So the first and most important thing with the roofs is just knowing what the slope is. Okay. And the slope is basically just the angle in which your roof is. So this part right here is referred to as the slope. That's the most important thing you need to know first. And then let's also cover a gable. And a gable is going to be basically where the end of the house is and whether or not there's a gable there or not. This one in particular right here, this is a gable. This is what we refer to as an open gable because it's not a hip roof, and we'll explain more about that. Next, we need to know about a valley, and that valley is basically where there is an intersection and then it turns, so that's that part, it's called a valley. So when I mention that, you'll know what I'm talking about. We're also gonna be covering what's called a ridge or ridge cap. So right here, this these boards right here at the top, that's referred to as a ridge or a ridge cap, which you can use any kind of stamp to make it make a ridge cap. We have a cupola, which is basically a kind of a protrusion on the roof that just allows air to kind of, it allows your building to air out. They're not necessary, but they're a lot in um, older buildings. And so they look nice and fantasy. We're going to do what's called a cricket. A cricket is just a piece of the roof that allows rainwater to fall off or away from the chimney so that that way it doesn't damage the chimney at all. You have your chimney here, a very common component on top of your roof. And then there's a hip, and that means it's the part, it's the corner of a roof that has a piece right here. And that's referred to as the hip. Think of it as the opposite of a valley. A valley goes inward, a hip protrudes out. So now that you know some of those basic terms, we can go straight into the components so that we can kind of figure out how that works, okay? Let's jump into components. And there's various components that you're gonna find in the roofing section. You'll find slopes, hips, dormers and hip valleys okay and let's go ahead and go into the cat into the catalog real quick you can kind of see what this looks like you just open up the catalog that's that tower symbol you click open catalog or you can click the get the little image right here open catalog give that a moment to open up and we open up the catalog and if you type in roof you'll have all those roof pieces so let's go to fancy balance here all right, one moment. Type in roof, and these roof pieces should show up. One second. Little lag here. Roof, there we go. And since there's, whenever I have multiple components with lots of kind of stamp sets, then I try to go over to the bottom, the top right hand corner here, and just go expand all stamp sets. So that way I can see all the components or all the stamps within the stamp set. And you'll see that we have a variety of different types of roofs. You have like your thatch, your tile, wooden, like your pirates. We've got metal, like you with the hell pack, leaves from Fay, bark also from Fay, your gothic horror with your blues, your grays, more kind of different color tile, and then your farmstead. So there are a lot of different options uh, for roof components. Okay, so make sure that you have all those. 
and you know what those are, you're going to need those to kind of figure out how to do our roofing. Let's close out and go over uh, the components or over the uh, types of roofs. There's a lot of different types of roofs and it's good to know what they are because whenever you have a roof combat or if you're trying to show the difference between a, let's say, a peasant's house and a lord's house or a uh, building, the roof can say a lot. Like thatch is more associated. That's that you know, hay looking, yellow looking roof that might be in a village or a peasant or a serf's or a lower class person's house. Well, if you're trying to make like a lord or a king or someone with a higher birth, quote unquote, then you want maybe you want to stick with a more fancy roof type of component or fancy colors, whatever it might be. So think about that. Let's jump right into the types of roofs here real quick. All right, some great question. Roofs are super complex. I totally understand. Let's go ahead and open up the types of roofs. And there's a couple. So this is a guide that I've made. You can find this on my profile. But we're going to go over the various types of roofs. So you have open gable. You have a hip, cross hip, pyramid hip, intersecting overlaid hip, shed, flat, gambrel, and mansard. And each one of these are kind of important to know because in certain climates or types of weather these types of roofs are built so let's say you had like a rainy area then you want a little bit of slope on your roof because you want the rainwater to run off your roof if you live in the desert where there isn't much rain then maybe it doesn't mind having a flat roof that allows you and the occupants to walk around on top of the roof so it's not important to whether or not there is a some pitch or slope to the roof Maybe it's a, a a lord or nobles. A mansard roof is a great roof to use for that. Or maybe a barn. You would use your gambrel. So think about those roof types and the type of buildings and the climates that they're in. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and compose each one. Great. Thankfully, some of these are just composite roofs that already exist. So you don't have to put them together. So that's really nice. Let's start with open gable first. Okay. An open gable is going to be your pretty standard. Okay, we're going to be creating this right here. And we're going to be talking a little about what that looks like at a side angle. So this is what your open gable looks like. And the gable part is this part right here. This triangle right here is the gable. Okay, and when you're trying to make different types of slopes, if you want a greater slope, then you would make these pieces a little bit smaller if you or a little bit shorter if you wanted to show like maybe a greek or a grecian like slope for your roof like the classical roofing then you would make the pieces a little bit longer okay so let's go over how to compose this and this is super easy you only need to just make one slope piece whatever one you want your choice then copy and paste that rotate it and then darken it because the problem is is that when you have the roofs both at the same brightness or darkness then there's no contrast and there's no real sense of depth so whenever you make it just make sure that you copy and paste the first slope flip and rotate it and you can do that really easily which is with a flip button if i was to go into uh let's say i wanted to click up Let's turn on this on real quick so you kind of know where that flip option is. There's a slate roof right here. You'll notice that there are some flip horizontal and flip uh, vertically. These right here are what you're going to use. So that way you can just flip it. That way you don't have to do extra work by clicking it and then rotating it with this, the rotation circle. Just flip it. Boom. Easy. Once you've kind of done that, then place them together, group, and then copy and paste. So from over here, you'll notice that I put them together. And then I just copied and pasted as many as I want to make them the long a length as I wanted to. So this is going to be your basic open gable. They're easy to put together and it's going to be the most common. And these, these kind of roofs are, like I said, in a climate where you have rain or a certain amount of rain because you want that rain water to fall off the slope, okay, instead of it causing damage and collecting on a flat roof and causing it to collapse. So this open gable, the simplest kind, easy to make. It's just as simple as just using one piece, copy, rotate, darken, piece together to make that as long as you want. So it's super easy to put together. It's not complex. The one you'll be using the most. Let's go ahead and do a hip roof, okay? Let's open up a hip roof. 
And hip roofs are composites. They already exist. So what's really cool about it is, is that you don't have to worry about assembling anything. It's so, so easy. Hip, hip, hooray. So a hip roof looks basically like this, okay? And there's no gable. It's not open. Normally the gable would be like this, right? But because there's a triangle right here that shows that the hip or that part of the roof connects into the ridge. So that's what a hip roof is. And these are already created for you. So they're not hard. They're not, you don't have to put anything together. It's just there for you. So those ones you'll be using a lot, okay? And definitely I think we should be adding more composite roofs so that you don't have to assemble all these. So if someone's thinking that, don't worry, way ahead of you. So hip roofs, easy to make, and you see the diagram of what they look like. So not complex. Let's go ahead and do our uh, cross hip. And cross hip is another kind of basic shape. You'll notice in the, like in the watercolor city style that you have some buildings that look like an L shape. Okay, those are called a cross hip where there's basically two hip roofs that connect to each other and then create a corner. These are a little bit more complex to make, but they do pay off and there's some fun and it's, there's an easy way to make them, make them. So let's first take a look at what they look like. So this is what it would look like if you're looking front at the face of it. This right here uh, is going to be where your gable is. So you have a gable right here. Here's the gable. That's this whole section right here. This whole section is going to be that part of the roof. Okay, this section of the roof is right here. And it also has an open gable at the end. Okay, if it wasn't open gable, then the slope would look like this. Okay, because it's not an open gable. It would just be cross hip without any kind of open gable. Now making these are a little bit more complex, but it's not hard. You just need to create first the two open gables that you wanna to connect together. Once you've created the open gable part, just make sure that you remove this corner right here because you're gonna be creating two sections right here. That's these two right here, okay? So you'd simply need to take those triangle pieces. Let me go over here, we'll show you these triangle pieces right here. Let me zoom in so you can see them. And you're gonna put these two pieces together, okay? Make sure that the ridge Ridges are on the inside, and then you'll piece them together. So one here, you piece them together. Just copy and paste and create another one. And as always, you're gonna make one part darker, right? Because you wanna make sure to create that contrast. You don't want those really flat looking roofs, okay? Now, once you've done that, then you'll move those two pieces into the corner over here. So you'll move, move these pieces one over to right here. And then this piece will go right over here, just like this. And then you'll piece them together. And you want to make sure that those ridges connect into the major, into the cap, okay? So making these are a little bit more complex. There's more steps, but it's not that hard. And definitely, like I said, we'll be sure to include these, uh, I think, in future composites, because that's probably a bit easier than piecing them together. Okay, let's go ahead and remove these paths. These are, like I said, pretty easy to put together. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Let's go ahead and move on to pyramid roofs. One of the best things about pyramid roofs is that they are really, really easy to put together because they already are assembled for you, okay? They're just like the hip roofs. They don't, uh, you don't have to piece them together. So in fact, these pyramid roofs are found with uh, the composites that you found with the hip roofs. So pyramid roof is basically where all, all the roof comes into one point, just like a pyramid would. So there's no open gable, obviously with a pyramid roof because it's all sloping inward into that center. Great for wet environments because the water is still sliding off, off of the roof and falling onto the ground or into a gutter. Okay, so hip roofs are e or pyramid roofs they already come as a composite, so you don't have to worry about assembling anything. Super easy, okay? That's always nice, right? Less work, the better. Okay, let's go and go into something, some more complex uh, roofs, a little bit more complex. Let's go into intersectional and overlapping hip roofs. 
These are going to be a little bit more complex, but I'll run you through on how to put these together, okay? You'll find these also in, basically in the uh, <clears throat> in watercolor cities, or uh, I think Fantasy Battle Maps even has some composite buildings that look like this, but it looks like a T. So instead of an L shape, like that hip, those hip sectional roofs, you actually have a T shape. So putting this together is a little bit more complex, has a few more steps, but not complex. Let's just go over first what you're looking at. This section right here is this slope right here. And then this big section is this section right here. So the first step is super easy. You're just making your open gable component, which we already showed you how to put together. So here's your open gable. And you can rotate that any direction you want, up to you. And then when you go to step two, you're gonna be putting together this section right here. And it's super easy to put together, it's four parts. Really, you just need to take these two pieces, copy, paste, flip, rotate, darken one, and then assemble, okay? Then you're gonna put those two pieces together. Once that piece is together, then you can assemble it over to here or put it together on top of that open gable. So intersectional overlaid hip, not complex. It's just knowing about how to piece them together, group them, and then piece those two larger groups together to make a single group. Whenever you are making roofs or just assembling anything, just make sure that you make groups, label them, put them together, and then lock them. And that way they won't accidentally be selected or anything like that. So groups, super important. If you don't know a lot about groups, definitely go check out their YouTube channel. We have a whole video about groups. They are super helpful. Definitely check them out. Okay. All right. We're almost there. We've got about five or six more um, roofs to cover, and then we're going to start roofing our own building. So let's go ahead and get that started here. All right. I'll delete these paths and we'll go to the next one. And this next one is a shed roof. And the shed roof is extremely easy to make really. In fact, we've already made it several times in the previous styles. The shed is simply one slope, okay? And it can be as long as you want. So all you have to do is just take, maybe if you want it to just be one slope, just one component, just like that, right? Super easy. And then you can piece together as many of these as you want to create a shed. And the sheds are generally small, tool sheds, uh, whatever you might use them for, firewood shed, a smokehouse, meat house, whatever it might be. It's just a single slope and that's it. It's not two slopes like you would with a hip or an open gable, okay? So it's super easy. You just need to use one slope piece or as many slope pieces as you want. Again, great for smokehouses, tool sheds, uh, firewood, whatever you might be. Even a chicken coop can have a shed roof. So definitely use those for your outbuildings or ancillary buildings to like maybe a farm or whatever you want. So super easy to make, not complex. Let's go ahead and do flat roofs, okay? Flat roofs are a little bit more, uh, not too complex. They're actually pretty easy to put together, but basically you're gonna create an L shape with your walls, with a, whatever wall you want. Just think of yourself as making a room, okay? And just make it a square or whatever shape you want, okay? And because there's no slope, it's just flat, it doesn't matter how complex the shape of the building is, it doesn't matter, okay? And then, once you've created your shape, you'll fill this in with a clipping mask. If you're not sure what a clipping mask, it's basically a, allows you to pick up whatever's on the FG layer, and so what you'll do is you'll size up the clipping mask to fit right underneath. You'll put it a layer beneath the group of walls that you have. And then you'll group it all together to make your building. And that way it'll be flat. Just know that you should probably put a staircase somewhere on that flat roof so the residents have access to the roof for whatever you want. Maybe there's a garden on the roof. Maybe um, that's where a spell is being cast. There's a... Uh, some kind of ruin, whatever you want, whatever can be on a flat roof, it's up to you. Let's quickly go over just some of the components of the flat roof. And there's really just one thing you need to know is that flat roofs do have a little bit of a wall that, that goes around the top. That's called a parapet wall. And they're basically just there so that people don't fall off or for rainwater to slough off and then 
go towards a drain. So usually these flat roofs aren't perfectly flat. There's a little bit, just a little bit of a slope so that water will collect into a kind of drainage system and then go down into the, into the house. Okay, so parapet walls, make sure that you add in staircase and maybe a drain, okay? Because that's what you're gonna find a lot. Because when it does rain in the desert, it means a lot for those occupants. So having a way to capture that rain for future use is super important. All right, let's go into gambrel. So do gambrel roof here. Okay, we'll delete that. Let's go with gambrel. Your gambrel is basically what you see with, you know, Americana, the barns that you see. This is great for farms or a farmhouse or a lumber yard or a lumber um, building. Lots of things that you can do with gambrel. It's also just a beautiful design that uses a series of slopes to look really interesting. So gambrel is not complex to make. All it is is two open gables put together and one's going to be smaller and one's going to be bigger. One's going to be darker, one's going to be lighter. So putting it together is super simple. Just make your first open gable. Make sure it's big, make sure it's wide. And remember, just copy, paste, flip, rotate, whatever it is, and then darken. Then you'll create your second part of your gambrel roof. Okay, so this right here, this section right here is going to be one. Okay, this section right here is going to be two. Okay, and then you're going to stack them on top of each other with the larger, wider one on the bottom. Okay, and then number two is going to be on top. Okay, and you can make this one a little bit wider so it kind of sticks out or a little bit longer so it sticks out, giving just a little bit of perspective there. Okay, and then always remember that whenever you stack uh, roofs on top of each other use either like a path or a stamp that's been blurred and go to black brightness so that that way it will be easier uh, to show that there is some height differential okay hey first time chatter rpg -ins. Oh, thank you terminology is so important i'm so glad that you're here by the way always love to see new faces all right, so sweet gambrel roof. I think we only got one more left and then we're gonna go straight in to roofing some buildings. And I'm excited for that because roofs are complex. I, I totally know how difficult that can be. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Uh, we just finished gambrel. So let's go ahead and turn, delete those, get them out of the way and delete. There we go, roof types. The last one is gonna be mansard and mansard is one of the more uh, elite like buildings it's a little bit more expensive type of roofing so expect it with your mansions your manor houses your villas uh you could even put them on castle roofs you can put them with your mansions uh your fortified your fortified um houses whatever it might be maybe a palace whatever mansard roofs are very ornate they're decorative and they're meant to be very nice so definitely associate them with more uh, classy like buildings and so the mansard roof basically tapers off at the top this doesn't create a perfect ridge there's either a flat or a slightly angled part at the top so you could have a slight angle like this and that would still be considered mansard mansard but I'm gonna make it flat and I like it flat at least for myself because it's nice to climb up the roof up the slope and then onto that flat section and you can do combat there maybe there's a chest up there um, maybe there's clues to a puzzle whatever it might be everyone knows who watches these streams i love roof battle maps roof scenes it's great to fight on roofs you get to kick people off watch them fall to their death or get injured and take damage whatever i'm brutal okay i like those roof battles all right so let's go ahead and put it together this is actually really really easy Step one, just take any kind of hip roof. Doesn't matter what hip roof it is. Even a pyramid roof would work just fine. Then you're gonna go ahead and take whatever flat, um, whatever thing you wanna put on the top. What I used here in two, these, what you see these gray pieces right here, these are basically just landings from the staircases. The landing is just a flat piece. Go ahead and check out staircases if you're curious to learn more about landings. That's in our YouTube channel, how to create staircases. Great video, very helpful. And I put two of them together and then put a third one where they connect over it 
and change it to a light and blend mode so that that way I won't see the line work between the two connecting. So definitely check out more about blend modes on our understanding blend modes video on our YouTube channel. That will be very helpful. Then once you've pieced those together, then you can use these wooden um, fences or whatever you want to cap around it. In fact, I can see that this is actually wrong. Technically the fence would be <laughs> around here, but you get the general idea. You can frame around those landings to create whatever you want. Hey, first time chatter, uh, Duchess Barbie, glad that you are here. Okay, so that's mansard roofs in a nutshell. They're pretty easy to make. You're just making sure that those landings line up with the hip part of the roof. See here how the, they line up, all of these line up with the hip. You don't want them to be off those hips because that represents that the hip connects into the flat part or the mansard part of the roof, okay? All right, well that concludes our, the different types of roofs. Now let's go ahead and take some of this knowledge and apply it by putting some roofs together. We'll just give two examples, okay? And I, what I want is we're gonna stick with the most simpler stuff because we can do another video in the future for advanced roofing. This is just for those of you who aren't really familiar with roofs. So we'll, we'll do the easiest stuff first. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the first one. And basically what you can do is you'll notice that we have some composite buildings uh, in the catalog, right? And there's some for each style. And you might think to yourself, okay, I wanna use this, but I don't know how to put a roof on top of it. So this is great practice. Pick up any composite, any composite building or interior, and then go ahead and lock it, put it on a lower layer, lock it, and then we're gonna go ahead and put some roof pieces over it, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is, what you wanna do is you wanna look at the main volume or the body of your stamp. So take a look here. You have two major volumes or part of this body. So let's do the first one. This one right here, you notice that there is a rectangle shape right here, okay? And you'll notice that there's also a rectangle shape right here. So we have something to work with here. Think about the main shapes of the building, okay? And then think about the largest part of the shape, the largest part of the shape, and then you can put a roof over each one of those shapes. Okay, so we have two rectangular shapes. Why don't we use two types of roofs that we've used to put one over the other in these yellow boxes that we've created, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So open gable, let's make an open gable over the largest shape first, okay? And you'll notice that I've put the gable right, or this roof, right over that first rectangle, okay? And I didn't need to add um, any pieces in this section right here for a reason, because we're gonna put another roof over that section, or actually over the whole rectangle right there. So we're gonna use two types. We're gonna use open gable for that first section, and then we're gonna use a hip roof to represent a second floor, because I'm noticing here that there are some staircases right here. So this obviously implicates or implicates that there is a second floor above or right there in this section right here. So let's put another roof type over this rectangle shape and we'll make sure that it goes above that open gable in that other rectangle to represent that it's a floor above. So first floor right here, also first floor right here, but we're gonna add in another roof to show that if there's a second floor there. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me delete all these paths and I'll show you how to do that. Go ahead and delete these. Okay, one moment here. Let's go ahead and turn that open gable all the way to full visibility. So you have that open gable there. And I just want you to know that you should also mark where the chimney is. So if you, if you have the path tool, just put a little mark so you know where the chimney is because you're going to want to also put that chimney on the roof. Super important because chimneys are basically a very noticeable component that goes on a roof. Building without one looks kind of weird. So unless it's uh, maybe a shed or something, but most houses, most domiciles, buildings where people live, there's going to be some kind of chimney or some place to keep them warm unless it's a very hot region. But for the most part, you want to have some kind of chimney. So mark it where it is. Oopsie, didn't mean to delete that. And let's go ahead and turn the, hook, the hip roof or the open gable back on. 
And then we're going to turn on a hip roof, which is a composite roof already. And notice that it's on top. You notice how it's overlapping over that first one. Okay. And you want to make sure that there's some shadows that are over this part right here. Oopsie. Let's undo that real quick. <laughs> My bad. Open that back up. Okay. All right. So let's open this up. One moment. Okay. This section right here, you're going to want to put some shadows. Okay. Because if you don't, it's just going to look like it's an extension of the first floor roof. So you want to add some shadows because contrast is how you show depth. Okay. So if you put a somewhat dark shadow with the path tool or a stamp at blur at zero brightness, whatever your choice of shadow is, um, you could even use an object shadow so that that way there's some shadow to show that this second floor roof is overlapping that first part of the roof because there is a second floor there. So the simplest way to roof a building is to really open gable or hip roof the first floor, the major sections, and then find out where your second floor, if there is a second floor or even a change in elevation or change of the roof style, take whatever roof you want, hip, gable, mansard, whatever, and then place that over the other section. So roofing your buildings is not as complex as you think. It's pretty easy overall. Okay, let's go ahead and delete these paths. And I wanna show you uh, the, the chimney part, which I accidentally deleted, right where that chimney is. And we're gonna do two things. We're gonna create a roof, a, a pyramid roof, and then we're gonna put a uh, a chimney on top of that and whatever chimney stamp you want. There's uh, at least a dozen chimney stamps. So pick which one you want on top. And that way you have that chimney. And I've even put a roof there so that rain will slough off of where the chimney is and off onto the other slopes and then eventually slope off onto the ground. Okay. And then last, I'll show you a diagram of what that looks like so that you have an idea because you're currently wondering, well, what does that look like at a side angle? Okay, so what you have here is your open gable right here. That's gonna be that red slope right here. And you'll notice that it's not a hip roof, right? Because if it was a hip roof, then the slope would be like that, right? So open gable, that's the section right here, open gable. Next, you have that hip roof right here. That's this hip roof right here. Okay, and it also indicates there's a second floor. See, here's that second floor section right here. All right, and then finally, you have that chimney with the pyramid roof right here. Okay, so putting together roofs, not as complex as you think. It's pretty easy stuff once you understand the terminology and how to putting it together. All right, again, I'm not covering anything advanced. This is just for those of you who are just not familiar with roofs. If people want a more advanced roofing tutorial, we can totally do that. Let me know, okay? Because I'm not against it. Let's go ahead and do one more, okay? And we're gonna cover some extra things that you can do on roofs. So this is not really advanced, but it's gonna help us out. So let's go ahead and open up real quick. Okay, first one. Let's go ahead and turn on our Gothic house. Let's see, why is this not on? Did I not turn on the group? Let me take a look. One moment. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, this is just a composite building from the Gothic horror style, and we might as well just use Gothic horror roofs as well, right? So this one's a little bit more complex. You'll notice that there's a lot of pop-outs and sections, like you got a pop-out right here, you've got pop-outs right here, and when you first look at it, you think to yourself, oh, this might actually be too complex. How do I, uh, how do I deal with something this complex? Well, it's not as complex as you think. Remember the trick. Look at the base shape. Okay, look at the base shape. All right, so the base shape is right here. Here's the base shape. So you have a basic shape. That can be any kind of roof you want. It can be flat, gambrel, whatever you want in that big section. And then there's another section right here. Okay, now there are no staircases in this one, but I'm just going to imagine there's a staircase right here because I want to indicate a second floor. You can even put a staircase uh, right in here somewhere as well to implicate that there's a second floor here. Okay, so as we did with the first one, all you have to do really is just put down whatever you roof you want on that large section first. Okay, 
So we got that main section. Let's, just, let's do open gable again because I like open gable. It looks nice. And remember the trick, you just need to piece together one side, copy, paste, rotate, darken. That's it. That's how easy to make open gable is. Once you've made that first large section, now you still have these sections right here. Okay, these sections. There's a couple routes that you can take. You can use more pieces or you can do something simple by just putting some pyramid roofs or hip roofs right over those sections. Pretty easy stuff, not complex. So I'm just going to put some hip roofs on there because I think that would look interesting. So I put two hip roofs here and it kind of has a more elaborate feel to it. You have this open gable at the base roof and then you have two hip roofs just like we did in the last one i've added two hip roofs instead of one and then we're going to indicate you know where the fireplace is and adding some extra stuff to it so let's do the chimney first and you've marked wherever the chimney is on this one there were two of them let me go ahead and hide some of these you can see where they are okay so you have your chimneys there and I would recommend just using the same chimney stamp that's with um, the Gothic house. So let me go ahead and remove the chimneys and these real quick. And you'll kind of notice that I'm using, uh, oopsie, let me go ahead and turn that off one moment. One second, here we go. Let's turn these down. Notice the chimneys. There's two of them. One in that main section, that big section over here. And another one right here. Okay, and we're gonna use the same stamp, okay? That same chimney stamp right here on our roof. So I'll go ahead and un put those back on real quick. Turn on my hip roofs again, and my open gable. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and add in my chimneys, of course. And let's go ahead and add a couple more things. Let's add in a cupola. If you're not sure, remember what a cupola was? It just, all it is is just opens up and allows for air to rise up, hot air to release and go out of the building if it's too hot. Or you can put shutters to make sure to close up the cupola so that heat doesn't escape on a cold day. It also just kind of allows smells of the dust and everything to rise and to get out of the house. So that way it's just a little bit more sanitary, a little bit nicer, okay? <laughs> I love that. Cupola hip roofs you got there. <laughs> Good one, good one. <laughs> Love it. Um, one other, so a couple more things that you can do to your roofs is add vegetation because it gives it a nice look. Let's say that you want to show that there's two things. You want to show that the building is dilapidated or hasn't been in a while. Show vegetation growing all over. It could be vines, bushes, trees, whatever it is you want to use to show vegetation on your roof. It's just a great way to make it look uh, a little bit more, some, adding some natural element to it. Okay, so that looks nice. Or if you want a rich house, a very wealthy house, and you have maybe some ivy growing on the side of it, just to give it a more elaborate feel to it. So vegetation is a great thing to add. And I wanna show you the diagram real quick so you can see what this looks like at an angle because I personally love making these little side angles. These are really, really helpful. So what we did in the beginning was we had this roof right here. That's our open gable, right? And that is this thing right here. This whole piece is that open gable, right? And then we also have the hip roofs right here. That's those tower-like structures right there. And then if you wanted to show that there's a cupola right here and show that the cupola is on top of one of those hip roofs, okay? so. Pretty easy stuff, not complex, very easy to put together. Uh, it's just about putting together the pieces first. If you wanted to make an intersection, intersectional uh, overlapping hip, then you would need to create first one section open or hip roof. With the hip roofs, they come in composites. You don't have to worry about assembling, but with your open gable, you'll have to assemble them together. And then if you wanted to create another section, you'll have to use triangle pieces put them side by side, and then put that. Remember I mentioned that earlier in the open overlapping hip or the intersectional slash hip overlap hip roof section. Just go back a little bit and you'll find that there. Okay, well, hey, that ends the stream. Super easy, roofs are not as complex as you think. Definitely recommend just practicing on 
our composite buildings that we have in the catalog, okay? So it's easy to put together and also make little side view pieces like this. They're actually really easy to put together, okay? You simply just need to use the path tool uh, with the segment section. That's how I made these and then I just filled them in with the path tool. These are super easy to make and they're helpful for you to figure out what you want the overall roof layout to look like. Like having a little side view is so, so helpful. I can't tell you how much, okay? All right, so hey, next week, I'm gonna be showing you how to do campsites with the Fantasy Battle Map style. You, as everyone knows, campsites are a staple. A lot of campaigns start with campsites and you're gonna be go stopping at campsites and wilderness campaigns all the freaking time. So we're gonna be having maybe some encounters. I'll be showing you how to make the terrain, how to make the campsite and how to run combat or maybe you wanna do like a guard system, whatever you want. So we'll be covering all of that in campsites next week. Next month, we're gonna be doing some new stuff, some new, some new, uh, some new types of titles, some new kind of content. Hopefully I'll have some, find some time to do time lapses and shorter videos, okay? Because hey, these long streams aren't for everyone. Don't worry, we're not gonna stop them, but we're gonna try my best to put in some new content so that everybody is included because inclusiveness is good. All right. Hey, that's it. I'll see you all next week and I'm excited for it. In the meantime, please stay safe and healthy. Merry map making and I'll see you soon. Auf Wiedersehen.